Solution Rum. Easy, right? One distillery, one brand, jobs are good. Again, you'd be forgiven for thinking that because the big brand to come out of St. Lucia is obviously Chairman's Reserve. The distillery is St. Lucian Distillers, SLD, but there's more to them than Chairman's Reserve. Because, ladies and gents, SLD, St. Lucian Distillers, actually have three brands. Chairman's Reserve, which is probably the most famous, Bounty, and there's a lot of bottle kill going on here. But then Rodders. Effectively, we call it Rodders, but Admiral Rodney. Now, again, if you're new to rum, you might be thinking, well, all right, one distillery, you know, one still kind of makes different rums. It's just aged for different lengths of time. Yeah, again, it's not quite as simple as that because they've actually got four stills and the different brands represent different things going on with the stills. So it's only right that we start off with the stills and then you can kind of get a picture of where we're going in here. So let's start off with the ones, the famous ones that most rum fans may have heard of. And that's John Doe. They've got four in total, but let's start off with John Doe 1 and John Doe 2. John Doe 1, 450, give or take, I think it's slightly less than that, but round up, 450 double retort pot still. And then you've got John Door 2, which is the big boy, 6,000 litre double retort pot still. So then we move on to the third still, which is pretty famous in its own rights if you're in Rum World. It's a Vendome still, uh, and it's kind of like it's, like, it's the hybrid, so it's a pot and column still, so it's a pot still with a column coming off it, and it's a 1400 litre. Again, I've rounded up, it's like 13 something, but 1400 litre hybrid still, hybrid still. But the column has got nine plates. Now the plates are relevant because you can get different ABVs and different uh, sort of flavor profiles by using different plates higher up the still, different sort of missing some out, having different number of plates in the still. So don't just think it is a nine plate and it's gonna use all of those plates. They kind of play about with different amounts of plates in that still. But that's also very relevant to their fourth still which again produces a phenomenal amount of rum. It's a Macmillan coffee uh, column still, double column still, and it's got 45 plates. Now, if you've got a little bit of knowledge about Rum World, don't naturally assume that's like Bacardi territory, you know, where they kind of distill it to sort of 90, 92% ABV and it strips all the flavor. Do not go there because even though it's got 45 plates, they use that still to produce a different sort of levels of rum. As I say, even though it's got 45 plates, they could take out a few and, and so it can produce light rums, it could produce heavy rums, it could produce medium rums as well. And by that, I mean kind of body, you know, like a full bodied rum, a rum, a light bodied rum, medium bodied rum. Using different plates at different times will give you different finishes in the rum. Now, as I said at the top, it's important to note that even though there's three brands here, they use different stills to create the brands and different blends of the stills to create the rums. So let's start off with Bounty, the cheaper brand to SLD, St. Lucian Distillers, pretty much predominantly only available on St. Lucia until recent years. The story goes, you know, they love it on St. Lucia, but they were kind of a little bit nervous about how the big wide world would take it because it is the cheaper, less refined, less aged rum, if you like. So they kept it for themselves, uh, but they absolutely love it. But however, on release into the big wide world, you know, I've tasted these, many people have tasted this, and they are flipping good rums. Predominantly, they come off that Macmillan coffee column still. So you are talking column still rums. The difference being, if I've got it here, I couldn't see it because it was empty, but the dark rum, the dark rum does actually use a blend of the Vendome still in there as well. But as I say, they are predominantly Macmillan coffee still, but that one does have a tiny little bit of blend of, of rum from that Vendome. But in the bouncy range, you know, if I get it out as well, sitting down here, um, you've got the you've got the white rum, you've got the gold rum, slightly aged rum, you've got the dark rum, you've got the spiced rum, and then it gets rocked out in cocktails. You've got their coconut liqueur as well. So from Bounty, from the cheap end, I'll jump all the way to the other end, Admiral Rodney. Admiral Rodney, I think there's four in the range now. Uh, very much in my early days. As I said, I've talked about this rum quite a lot. In my early days, you know. Admiral Rodney was one of the premium rums that I had in. However, it was just one rum 
available at the time. It was just Admiral Rodney. It was only when Spirit Bam uh, bought out, I think it was Spirit Bam that did this. Spirit Bam sort of got involved and bought out St. Lucian Distillers. Spirit Bam, bearing in mind that hopefully it'll be on screen, but they also own Clement, which is the next island up, uh, Martinique, sorry, um, and uh, Rum JM. Okay, so two agricole rubs. So neighboring islands, you've got St. Lucia sort of mid, kind of just above Barbados, if you like, in the Caribbean. You've got Martinique, which is the next um, next island up. But Spirit Bam own both of those kind of, well, all three of those distilleries, if you like. Rum JM, Clement, and St. Lucian distillers. But as I say, to my knowledge, Spirit Bam were the ones that kind of saw, like, you know, what they could achieve with Admiral Rodney and a premium range. So Admiral Rodney has gone from that normal sort of premium upgrade to Chairman's Reserve to actually four different blends. And I think they might even do like a limited edition or different release in Admiral Rodney as well. I think, I don't, don't hold me to that. But we've got here, uh, we've got the Royal Oak here as well, but the Princessor is another one I love. But the point being with this, this is again, and a lot of people miss this, this again is column still. It comes off the Macmillan still, the Macmillan coffee still. There was absolutely no pot involved in that. None of the John Doors are involved in that. But it has the reason why I love it because I'm inherently, I do love my column stills. It's not, I can automatically sort of taste it. It's the fact that they are predominantly a little bit lighter in flavor, a little bit lighter in I don't know what the word is, but when you taste it, it's a little, it's not as robust, it's not as thick and unctuous as like it's a pot still. Don't get me wrong, I love some pot stills as well, but my heart does sit with column still. And don't automatically think that, you know, pot still should be more expensive than column still because it's all about the quality of the rum that comes off the still and the aging as well. Now, when it comes to aging, I wasn't, I was gonna mention this at the end, but I should have probably in hindsight dropped this a bit earlier in the video as well because the one big thing St. Lucian distillers don't do is put numbers on the front of their bottles. And that is because St. Lucian distillers whole philosophy started by Laurie Barnard. Their whole philosophy is about blending together different rums of different ages. Therefore, you will never see an H statement on any of their rums because they are all about creating the perfect rum using different blends of rums. Take the Admiral Rodney, for instance, as I said, coming off the column still, this is a blend of six to 12 year old rums that have gone in here, which then leads us nicely on to Chairman's Reserve, the flagship brand of St. Lucian Distillers. You know, they're out there. There is a premium rum in this as well that kind of sort of nestles nicely in the Admiral Rodney level, sometimes even more. You know, back in the day, there used to be a different, I forget what it was now, but a different, so it was 1931, but it used to be a different blend of, casks i think but it used to have different color labels see that purple red white and all that now it's just sort of a standard sort of white label 1931 but it's all about a different blends of rums that goes into that and this is where we go down because the entry level st lucia uh, st chairman's reserve here is the original and it's kind of got the younger aged rums in it and that's really, really good quality rum. But then you can go up to the Legacy, which has got a blend of rums from five and six year old in it. But from there, we then go up to the Forgotten Casks. And this is what a lot of people missed. You know, a lot of people, and you could, you could, you know, I'm privileged that I've been in the booze industry a long, long time. So I can understand marketing talk. I understand what brands are trying to get out, but a lot of people saw this as a limited edition. It's forgotten casks. It's basically casks. They had a big fire and they, you know, there were casks that got mislaid and then they found them years later. People mistook that as a limited edition. All right. All it simply was, they use rums that are slightly too old to go into the legacy and into the, the original. So they created a new rum, which comprises of eight to 11 year old rums. Didn't quite fit in the 1931 range, didn't fit in there, so they had slightly older rums. So what they did is they created the story about the forgotten casks because they were kind of mislaid and forgotten about, but they were eight 
to 11 year old rums. That's not to say they can't recreate that rum at eight to 11 year old, of course they can, but people miss that in the marketing. A lot of people I've spoken to went down, oh, it's limited edition, now they've magically, you know, able to recreate it. Of course, if you've got an eight year old rum in a specific barrel, of course you can replicate that. If you've got an 11 year old in a specific barrel, of course you can replicate that. You know, this shouldn't be a bombshell to most people. Most people should comprehend that. So this was, while it was kind of released as the Forgotten Casks, it was never going to be a limited edition unless it didn't sell. So hopefully you can understand with Solutia is a bit more complex than just the one brand, the one rum that's then aged up a bit longer to create one and then aged up even longer to create another. Solution rums are all about blending different ages, different stills together. But as far as quality goes, look, even I love the Bounty. The Bounty Dark is a great, great rum. The Chairman's Reserves are a great, great rum. The Chairman's Reserve 1931 is a phenomenal rum. And I absolutely love the Admiral Rodney. Again, Solution Distillers are probably the quiet people in as an English style of rum. We need to get rid of that term. But you know, when we look at Barbados, when we look at Guyana, when we look at Jamaica and all that sort of stuff, solution rums are a little bit kind of below that in how people kind of think of them. And I really don't mean that in quality wise, but you know, people, Barbados and Jamaica are at the top of people's minds and El Dorado, DDL, Guyana, you know, but solution rums should be up there because they are phenomenal rums. They just don't do age statements. They are all about the blending. And that's even evident in their spiced rum because their spiced rum, even on the bounty, is in real life spices and not a lot of big brands can claim that.